Hello and welcome everyone, Tiberius here, and today we'll be talking about how you can use ChatGPT or other large language models to turbocharge your recon for both bug bounty and pen testing. ChatGPT isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and while it certainly has limitations, if we're careful with the wording of our prompts, we can definitely use it to our advantage. As always, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Sharing knowledge is what we're passionate about here at TCM Security, so please feel free to post recon-based prompts you've used in the past. Before we go any further, a quick word about this video's sponsor, Sneak. As we find ways to be more productive and build applications faster, we also need to find faster ways to secure them. With today's modern development lifecycle, there's no reason to have insecure code, especially when it's so easy to check your code using Sneak. Sneak meets you where you are by integrating with your existing tools so you can find and fix vulnerabilities in real time, right from your IDEs, repos, containers, and more. Sneak finds your vulnerabilities and lets you fix them with just a click, and also opens pull requests so you can merge and move on. Let's see just how easy that is. I'm going to add a project from GitHub and Sneak is going to import my code and then scan it for vulnerabilities. Now I can easily fix a lot of those vulnerabilities by drilling down and clicking open a fix PR. Sneak will automatically create a pull request on GitHub with those recommended fixes. As with any pull request, we can check that everything works before merging it or make minor modifications if necessary. So sign up for Sneak for free to secure your projects from the start by going to sneak.co slash the cybermentor. And a big thank you to Sneak for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's first talk about what not to do when using LLMs like ChatGPT. While it's tempting to treat AI as a neutral or even friendly assistant, don't forget the data you provide is technically being sent to a corporation. Now, maybe there are stipulations in the terms of service which prevent them from using that data, but it's still better to be safe than sorry. With that in mind, please don't send real customer data to applications like ChatGPT. That includes things like active session tokens, JWTs for example, credentials, or even non-public code snippets. My general rule is that if you can access the data via normal means, it's okay to feed into ChatGPT. To give a more specific example, if there's some publicly available JavaScript code you want to analyze, that should be fine. If the code is from some private source, such as a local file, you've managed to pull off the server keep that secret. Another thing that you should be wary of when using ChatGPT is just running code it generates for you without first reviewing it yourself. It's fine to get ChatGPT to help you automate tasks with code, but if you read through the code and are uncertain what a single line is doing, do some research to make sure it's not malicious. Without further ado, here are a few examples of prompts to help you out with your recon. If you have a scope in a bug bounty which includes a wildcard domain, we want to find as many subdomains as we can. The standard way of doing this is using a common subdomain word list like the popular all.txt from Jason Haddix. However, if 100 bug bounty hunters are using this same list, we're all going to be discovering the same subdomains. Since bug bounties only reward the first hunter to find a vulnerability, we can give ourselves an edge over the competition by finding subdomains that aren't covered by these lists. The popular tool AMAS supports Hashcat styled masks for performing modifications to a supplied word list, but you can use Hashcat's mask processor tool to generate modified word lists for use with your favorite subdomain brute forcing tool. I asked ChatGPT to create a list of short Hashcat style word list masks for name alterations to use in subdomain brute forcing based on the most common subdomain alterations. Let's pass one of these masks to mask processor and then pipe the output into pure DNS, targeting a totally 100% not pre-prepared domain. As if by magic, we found a new subdomain. We can also take advantage of a number of subdomain permutation generating tools like DNSGen or Gotator if we want to use a pre-made word list instead of brute forcing. Also remember that you can give ChatGPT formatting prompts to make its output easier to copy. For example, I asked it to generate a list of 20 common subdomain prefixes and suffixes, which can be used to create subdomain permutations for brute forcing. Output each list item unquoted 
on a new line with no numerical prefix or explanation. And it will give me exactly what I wanted, a new line separated list I can simply select and copy for use in these permuting tools. Once we have an application we wish to attack further, we should perform additional recon like directory busting. Despite the name, all popular directory busting tools like Ferox Buster or GoBuster support the use of custom file extensions to find application files. This makes sense as it allows us to map out application functionality and discover hidden areas of the application that traditional directory only busting would miss. We may look for files ending in txt, html, or a language like PHP if we know it was used to code the application. Using ChatGPT, we can ensure better coverage by generating more specific extensions. For example, assuming the application does use PHP, we can ask ChatGPT to list PHP-related extensions. This will not only include various .php variants, but also PHTML, Inc, TPL, and INI, among others. Using these extensions may find us files which other testers have missed, simply because they made assumptions about the extensions in use by the application. In addition to application files, it's often useful to try and find file backups which have not been deleted. A developer may have created a temporary backup of a file, for example copying index.php to index.php.old while making live changes and just forgotten to remove it. If we can find and download these files, they may contain source code or other sensitive information. Not only would this be worth a bounty, but it may allow us to find more vulnerabilities in the application. ChatGPT can again be used to generate lists of these extensions using a prompt like generate a list of possible backup file name extensions based on the most popular ways developers use to create temporary copies of important files. We can use these with our original word lists as well as custom word lists based on the files we have already found. I can tell you from personal experience that I've found entire backups of SQL databases using this method. Now, ChatGPT does have an input length limit, which means you cannot usually post large amounts of code for evaluation. One example is the main.js file from JavaScript heavy single page apps, or SPARs, which can sometimes be several megabytes in size. While ChatGPT cannot analyze these files for us, we can get it to create shell commands to do some basic information discovery. One common task we may wish to perform is to extract all possible URLs from the JavaScript code, as this will often reveal all the API calls of the application, even those only intended for admin level users. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create a bash command to extract full URLs and relative API paths from minified JavaScript code, e.g. main.js. It's generated a command and explained it. It looks good to me, so let's run it against the OWASP juice shop main.js file. As you can see, it identified a number of API endpoints, as well as full URLs which may be useful to look into on a real engagement. We can also be more generic and ask ChatGPT to give me ideas for information that can be extracted from compressed main.js files of single page web applications and provide a bash command to perform each. Let's say we've identified a potential local file inclusion vulnerability with a directory traversal, but we're encountering a filter. We can ask ChatGPT to generate a list of filter bypassing payloads. These alone aren't going to do anything, since we need to try and access a local file to confirm the vulnerability. Assuming the application server is running Linux, we can get ChatGPT to generate a list of common file paths, not directories, which are shared between a large number of Linux distributions, and are also generally world readable. We can then combine these two lists using a tool like Burp's Intruder and gain a greater level of coverage and potential success. That's all from me today. I hope I've shown how powerful ChatGPT can be when it comes to bug bounty and pen testing recon. Remember to experiment with different ways of phrasing your prompts to get the most out of LLMs, and please do share useful prompts you found in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and found it informative, please consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time.